So hi there everybody. So today I would like to talk about the Panasonic GH5S, its sensor, and why I actually sold one of my Panasonic GH5 to get the GH5S. Stay tuned. So far on my YouTube channel I've been talking about the Panasonic GH5 a lot, and that's because it's the camera that I use and that I'm going to continue using for a long time. Uh, but in the future I'm going to be talking about the craft of filmmaking, editing, how I shoot, which other gear I use, and probably about gear outside filmmaking as well. So if you want to see those videos, please subscribe. So when the Panasonic GH5S was announced, I wasn't really overwhelmed about the specs of the of that camera. Of course, the low light capabilities are probably going to be great, but apart from that, I wasn't too hyped about it. But after really thinking about that camera and what it actually stands for, I made a decision to put up one of my cameras, one of my GH5s for sale. I'm not saying that the GH5S is a better video camera than the Panasonic GH5. I'm saying it's a different camera and I would like to have the option to shoot in low light uh, as the GH5S is gonna be able to do. One of the things that I've been thinking about, of course, is the Panasonic GH5S sensor. And I feel that Panasonic isn't really telling us, us everything about that sensor. We know from interviews that Panasonic has done that the sensor is probably going to be a little bit larger than the normal Micro Four Thirds sensor, but they haven't stated how much larger and exactly how the pixels are situated and stuff like that. So the normal Panasonic GH5 has a crop factor of 2.0 uh, when you put lens on lenses and you want to compare them to a full frame uh, equivalent. The Panasonic GH5S though uh, is gonna be a slightly lesser crop and by much, how much we actually don't know because Panasonic is not giving us that information. But if we try to read the specs and uh, with what we know try to make our own decisions it's quite uh, a nice read for us because what we know is actually that the sensor is going to be 11.93 megapixels. Uh, what we also know is that if you shoot in 17 by 9 then the vertical pixels are going to be 4096 and if we shoot in the square 4k mode you're going to shoot at a pixel ratio of 2880 pixels by 2880. So multiplying those we get um, an amount of 11,700 pixels and that's slightly less of what Panasonic actually says. So we know that the sensor is probably going to be a little bit bigger than that. Another thing that we know about the Micro Four Thirds sensors is that if you want the 4x3 uh, size in millimeter it's going to be 17.3 millimeters times 13 and that's the size of the sensor on the Panasonic GH5 but if you look look at the GH5S you Panasonic on their web page stays that same size of active pixels when you're shooting at 4x3 but in interviews uh, Panasonic officials have actually said that the Micro Four Thirds format is made to be used with an embodied image stabilization and that's why the sensor is going to need a little bit of wiggle room uh, so it can move a little bit and get stabilized by the camera. With that said, uh, the specs for the GH5 and the GH5S on the Panasonic website is actually the same. So I'm wondering if the Micro Four Thirds area is actually bigger than Panasonic and Olympus is actually letting us uh, know because of the image sensor needing to move a little bit. So with that said, I've tried to make my own calculations about how big the sensor actually is because Panasonic is, isn't giving us that information. And if you go to different sites, uh, on the web, you're gonna find different information uh, about the size of the sensor, so it's really hard to know exactly. So if you shoot in the cinema 4K, which is a 17 by 9 uh, aspect ratio, width of the picture is gonna be 
just north of 19 millimeters. And if you shoot in the 16 by nine aspect ratio, it's gonna be just south of the 19 millimeters uh, size of the sensor. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that the Panasonic GH5S, uh, when shooting in 16 by nine or 17 by nine, is gonna use a bigger part of the sensor and more or less make the camera, the Panasonic GH5S, and something between an APS-C and a Micro Four Thirds camera when using it for video. And this is really nice. So I can't really understand why Panasonic is, isn't talking about this even more. Uh, I don't know exactly what the crop factor is gonna be, but I'm guessing it's gonna be around 1.8. So that means if you're putting on a 12 millimeter lens on the Panasonic GH5, you're gonna get an equivalent of 24 millimeters. But if you put the same lens on a Panasonic GH5S, it's gonna be wider than that, uh, which is really nice and makes the camera come much closer to the, to like the can Canon APS-C sensor formats. If you have any questions for me, or if you feel that I've gotten everything wrong here, uh, just write in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna try to make videos more about filmmaking and how I use the gear as well, not only that, which gear that I have. Uh, so, and I'm trying, gonna try to upload much more frequently. And I wanna thank everybody for the feedback that you've given me through Instagram and through Stuff Smart, through YouTube. And I would love if Panasonic could release the full specs of the sensor because I, because I actually think that the, the camera is gonna be a beast when it comes to filmmaking. And uh, the in initial worries I had about it not having IBIS are actually blown away about the sen sensor actually being bigger, bigger. So as I said, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to ask in the comments or on Instagram or on Stuff Smart. Bye bye.